Welcome to the J.R. Hendrick Texan Night, the gentleman, the podcast that deals with the early life of J.R. Hendrick. And now this episode is Jim Hendrick as El President Day, as J.R.'s father meets with President Clinton in the Oval Office. He's here, sir. And the switchboard's been instructed to hold your calls. Thank you. James Ryan Hendrick. It is uh, good to see you this morning. Now, how uh, so, it's awfully early, but how would you like to have a McAllen laced uh, uh, espresso? I prefer orange cheese very much. I'm going to be traveling with her on this afternoon. Hello. Well. I've been briefed by Bob Cooney, by uh, Paul Rubin, and later on today I'm going to be briefed by uh, Leon Drew. Leon Drew, I'll tell you what, he's a, he's a stellar public servant, and he's a hell of a man to work alongside. Well, I, I'm glad to see it that way. <laughs> Well, Mr. Hendrick, I'm here to ask you about your plan. I had a chance to study a little bit. Faith-based initiatives. Why you? And why now? How about the fact that I think the government is unresponsive? You let me be the judge of that? Excuse me, Mr. President. I thought my speech, my uh, statement to the press on the 9th was clear enough. I'm in service to the country. Not in service seat to you. Huh. Interesting, isn't it? What's in the list? How about this? Don't lecture me. Because I made you. Wrong. <coughs> I made myself. I became an oil giant. I got involved in politics and endorsed Bush in 88 because my father-in-law said at the time, Jeremy Swain, Politician and rancher. Bless a lot of souls in Texas. <laughs> Even in D.C. I agreed to let you serve alongside me because a long time ago, back in 1961, your father-in-law and your wife came to the White House and shook John, John Kennedy's hand. Here's to our mutual relationship, even if it's distant. Cheers. Cheers. Who helped you come up with this idea of faith-based initiatives? Michael Ann Pierce. Ah. Bonnie Callahay. Good folk. But I need to have this clear with my advisors. Not just some peon appointees. I don't appreciate the way you insulted me and my people. Well, maybe you should see things how they are. How they really are. So I'm going to offer you a job. Deputy under Secretary of Commerce for Public Affairs. Think about it, Hendrick. This is an opportunity of a lifetime. 
even after a job in commerce since hell, 89. Things change. Like what? It was a year ago you wanted a position like that. I found my place. I found my purpose. Let's shut the door so reporters don't hear us. Are you listening to me, Hendrick? I'm offering you this job so that maybe you'll be less of a thorn in my side. You ever thought about that? How about the thought that I don't have to take it? The thought of working alongside Ron Brown makes my skin crawl. You know what Ron Brown said about you yesterday? He said you're a loose cannon. With all that's going on with Bosnia and Rwanda and Whitewater, you got to be the loose cannon. Even even Phil later said, <laughs> "Yeah, well, let me tell you something, Mr. President. Here's why I ain't taking the job. I'm holding your feet to the fire. How about that? This is the position to do it. Found my place, my purpose. We're unhappiest. All right." Not working the side along Ron Brown. Now you listen to me. What I said on November 9th still rings true today. I served this country. I keep you around because of the credentials of your wife. And I offered you a, a job that is a shot at the big brass ring. And you turned it down. What the hell, Hendrick? I'm working this kind of a job right now, Miss Prison. This is where I want to be. Settled. Closed. Period. It just shows how ruthlessly dumb and podunk and stupid you really are. What, some villager? Some guy that, looks at the pe uh, that lives in the cow town? Yeah, go ahead. Make fun of my ranch. You forgetting the man who did that to me and my wife. Who shook John Kennedy's hand. Yeah, I forgot. I'm I'm sorry about his passing. Well, now my mother-in-law is dying of cancer, Miss President. I'm sorry about that, Jim. Listen. Everybody around here appreciate you and the job you do. We appreciate what you're doing to this country. And that means the world to us. It means the world to me. You're doing a good job even if it's something I don't necessarily approve. But you listen to me. You listen to me and you listen to me good. Just because I appreciate you being on this job doesn't mean I have to like you. I'm not saying you have to. I keep you around because you keep me on my toes. Some people around here don't want to work. Well, I do. I told you if I got a job, I was going to hold you accountable. I appreciate that. That being said, you have a lot of issues, my dear friend. You are totally and stupid. Mr. President, come on. 
I thought we moved beyond labels and insults. I mean, it's kind of like, what the hell? So I guess you have your own friends in the press. Why you don't mix it up sometimes? No, Mr. No, Mr. President, I've done it your way. I did what you wanted. I happen to know one of the reporters that happens to be your friend. Norma Sanders of the Society page, who goes around destroying people's lives, and you call me Podunk. Shut up. Sit down. Relax, and let me do the talking. <laughs> now, I've heard in circles. A few later called me and said that your son's applied for a spring internship with, with Small Business Administration and a summer one. Small Business Administration and the American Conservative Union. My guessing is he don't want to work with you all the time. <laughs> Maybe he's angry at you for how you try to socialize his life. And your faith-based initiatives Judeo-Christian, I kind of admire that. What about Hindus, Buddhists, Muslims? <sighs> Mr. President, there's other people in the Small Business Administration that can initiate that. Why don't you talk to Phil later himself? He gave me the same damn excuse. Why are you patronizing me? I gave you this damn appointment. You were supposed to be doing your job. I am doing my job. I'm serving this country. I ain't serving the of you. What's your new better now? I wanted to chew you up and spit you out for breakfast after receiving that plan that I had last week. But after discussing it with Dick Morris, I realize that ain't gonna do me no good. No good. I hate to tell you this, Mr. President. You're on the downswing, and Gang Gingrich is rising fast. I'm going with him. May I ask why? You continually shut out conservative Democrats 
and conservatives even after the election. Let me tell you something. That's a cheap damn trick. Nuke's gonna gain more popularity now. Because you can't see things how they really are. You know, Hendrick, you are one of the brilliant, brilliant strategists. Or you're one of the biggest black, uh, jackasses I've seen around the block. You haven't had me dark in the door of Pennsylvania Avenue in six months, Mr. President. And I like to keep it that way. But I feel like I have to. Let me tell you something. When we met in June, I told you what you up against me if you didn't respond. You should see what happened election night, Mr. President. People are mad. So naturally, you gotta be a part of the crowd that's mad. How about your administration stop shutting people like me out? Now I won't have to go behind your back no more. You're pathetic. You're podunk. I don't understand a damn thing. You wonder why I turned down that job? Sure. I would love to know why. My oldest son's heart swelled with pride when I told him about the appointment that you gave me. I want to return to Texas with my head held up high to be able to tell my family I did the right thing. You're going to Gainesville first. My personal corporate retreat. It's none of your damn business. Sorry to make you so touchy, but I need to know where you stand on my faith based initiatives. I'm going to do them. Businesses in California, Arizona, and Texas want them. Do you do everything California, Arizona, and Texas want you to do? I thought you served in the country. <laughs> I know you're from Little Rock. But all you care about, <laughs> longest time, is what's going on in Washington, New York. What is it, Hillary Collins? Flyable country. She didn't have anything by it. Why do you think health care didn't pass? Miss President, and I like you. We don't have to hate each other. I'm putting the CR out here. And I'm heading back to Texas in pride.
Jim, you're wrong. Because when this legislation session, session is over, you and you conservatives can be wearing an egg on your face. And I get to be elect, re-elected president. We hope that you enjoyed listening to the J.R. Hendrick Texan Gentleman. If you like what you hear, please subscribe and become a part of the adventure. This is the James Hendrick and Power Network saying until next time, get ready for the rest of the story. Because it's going to get a little bumpy from here.